This game's 3D character art style is one of the best in their genre, and I think they're getting even better with each new character. Last time, I analyzed every inch of Jane Doe for research purposes, and today, I used Astra as a reference and made my own character in the Zenless Zone Zero art style, or at least a budget version. Today we'll start from a complete body and face mesh, but as always, I have old tutorials in case you need to catch up to speed. So let's begin analyzing and then summarizing the steps we take in Blender, starting with the face structure. Zenless Zone Zero has a smoother facial structure. You can see that their side profile and even cheekbones are relatively flat, compared to let's say the Wuthering Waves model that we analyzed last week, because they're going for a more cute rather than mature look. So I'm going to start with tweaking a head model that I made a while back. For the purpose of this study, it's not really worth it to make a new one from scratch because all the tweaks we need to make are a few clicks away in sculpt mode. So I flattened the cheekbones, the cheek, and the side profile. And then I also turned that frown upside down to match the usually more cheerful vibe of Zenless Zone Zero. Let's create a new upper eyelash from scratch. Their upper eyelash has this nice defined upper and lower split, and their eyelid crease is a separate plane that dips down near the eyelash around this point. To replicate this, I just start with a single point and then extrude it along the upper eye socket line. Then one more point for the cat eye at the end. Then I extrude this into an upper and lower half. So now we have three rows of edges, and we can make the middle edge stick out so that it gets that 3D look. And then we'll just adjust these vertices columns by pushing them in one by one so that it rests in front of the eye socket. We'll adjust the points as needed, making sure to check at it from multiple angles. We'll make it a little more prominent by pushing this middle edge out a little bit more. And checking from a lower angle, we want to make sure this bottom row occludes this area. We'll extrude two points from this part to create that two-pronged inner corner. It's a very small detail which Hoyoverse even makes 3D, but I'm just going to make it a flat. We want to extrude from the outer corner as well. It's going to cover about half of the side of the eye and then taper off into a sharp point. Now I'm going to select these edges separating the upper and lower halves. I'm going to mark this as a seam, and it's going to make our life easier later when we're texturing. I already had an eyelid crease plane, so I'm just going to modify this one. The angle and positioning was incorrect. I made it a little lower, and at some point, it should touch the upper eyelash. So after I got the position and the curve correct, I go back and extrude it. And just like our upper eyelash, we want to make sure all of the vertices are positioned right in front of the head. The smaller lashes follow a similar procedure. And as we touched on in the last video, the reason they do this instead of like texturing it into the skin is because it's a really small detail which you don't want to be tied down to the geometry and the texture, which would make it very pixelated. And being meshes, it's now very easy to control them to wherever you want them to be, especially in creating the shape keys later. Them being disconnected is A-OK. -okay. Same goes for these additional eyelashes that we're going to create. These ones are going to be working with a cone shape rather than making them a flat plane. And even though they're disconnected, the modeler does this really cool technique where they align the lower half of these lashes to the lower half of the main eyelash. So they look seamlessly combined when they're textured. And I'm going to show you more about that later. You can kind of already see what I'm talking about when I create these edge seams. Which again, will make our texturing life a lot easier later. I went ahead and duplicated just one more. Next up, the iris is one of my favorite parts of Zenless Zone Zero models. They have this unique hand-drawn style and this slightly concave, elongated coin structure. We're going to do a simplified version of this. I add a new circle to the scene, extrude it in a few times so that we have a few cuts, eventually merging it in the middle, and push in the middle vertex with proportional editing active. Then we're going to take all of that and extrude it once. Before we unwrap the texture, we're going to squash it into its oval shape and make sure the outer ring is marked as a seam. 
so that when we work on the texture, it's going to be the same shape. Of course, I shrunk it down and placed it into the eye sockets. We'll rotate it into place later. So in UV editing, we'll create a new image and unwrap it into that. And we export the UV layout into an R program of our choice so that it's easier to work on. I create a thick outline and a curved line in the middle to separate the upper and lower halves. Lighter color on the bottom, darker color on the top, and then on the very bottom, a highlight color. They also create this secondary outline at the halfway point. They create another oval here in the middle that will be a little bigger than the iris. As you can see, the iris is separate. I made the upper half a radial gradient and added their signature hatched bars for that hand-drawn look. Theirs are a little smaller than this. Rotate your iris downward and outward to match the angle of your eye sockets. They're facing opposite directions for now, but we can fix that later when we apply the mirror modifier. As for their pupil texture, it's just a dark outline and a dark fill. They often have a single color dot highlight. And another trademark of their iris style is that their top half has a highlight as well. I've added in the pupil as its own circle plane and an additional white highlight also as a circle plane. So that shape keys can control their size and position. Just made a final tweak on the upper highlight position. They like to make it just barely visible, peeking out from the top. Also, I should probably mention I sculpted the top of the iris to be a bit wider at the top. You might have a hard time seeing it, but this dotted area is their inner eye shadow, and they make it semi-transparent. We can quickly make one of these by going to our upper lash and then just selecting this edge and extruding it. And that's already pretty close to the same shape that you want. So I duplicated it and separated it, extruded it down. And all we're gonna do is make sure it's in front of the iris but behind the upper eyelash. Just like your iris, rotate it to match the rotation of the eye socket. To make this transparent in Blender, give it a new material and then go to your shading tab. Put in an emission and a transparent BSDF and mix them with a mixed shader. Then in material settings, just change blend mode to either alpha hashed or alpha blend. You can always tweak how opaque it is and what color it is. I think it's nicer if it's not a pure black. Try to go for maybe like a dark blue or a dark red. Now let's texture our lashes. I'm going to go to the UV editing tab, image that has my eye texture. Because of how we mark the seams, it's going to be super easy to visualize and texture it how we want. See how the bottom face of those single lashes line up with the bottom half of the main eyelash. We're going to play around with these colors, but the upper half of the main eyelash will be a lighter color than the bottom half. One detail I really like from Zenless is the highlights on the upper half of the main eyelash. Use a lighter and saturated version of the color that you use for the upper half. The position is a little off on this first try. I mark the middle of the correct position, which should be right above the pupil. I'm going to make the eyelid crease shadow now. I forgot to do this earlier, but you just extrude from here. They might as well be attached because they move together. And make this rounded shadow shape. And we can go ahead and put this on the same texture as well. Their face texture has some very soft texturing going on. I reset my face texture so the mouth and nose details that were there earlier are gone, but we're going to have them back soon. I'm just here trying to figure out the correct skin tones. And I'm going to add a bit of blush under the eyes as well as the nose and the mouth. I add the small nose outline which is only on the bottom half of the nose. 
This part is going to be a bit scuffed because I didn't re-unwrap the face UVs after I sculpted them at the start. But overall, it's not going to make like a huge difference. So I applied some lip color. And then once that's done, add a little highlight or two. And then I just use the line tool to go along the lip line UVs. And although it's very subtle, you can exaggerate the corners of the lips and you can make it a little bit thinner when it goes towards the center. It's hard to see in the model, but it is like that. I don't want to forget to mention that the eyebrow, same as the eyelid crease, it's just a flat plane and the outline will just be textured in because that is one outline that you always want to be present and don't want to rely on the shader to do. My model's eyebrow was already the same style as Zenless, so I didn't really have to remake it. We take a look at their hair, it's very efficient in terms of polygon. There's not a lot of separate parts and I do want to try and replicate that. So instead of using um, curves, I'm just going to model it using planes. The key here is to keep it simple. Start with the plane, don't subdivide it too much yet. Just get the basic shape of the hair structure you're trying to make. In this case, we're going to do the front bangs first. And then once we got the basic form and shape down, that's when we can start subdividing it and uh, adding the little details. The advantage of this method is that it's very clean and easy to control. And you're not going to have like 9 million different hair strand objects by the time you're done. It'll be pretty useful for what I'm going to do because my hairstyle is not going to be too complicated and it's not going to have too many single unique strands. A useful tool for the bangs here is to use mesh split faces by edges so that we can easily create some splits. And we can turn those splits into chopped ends or pointy ends. At this point, I just applied the mirror modifier because I don't want it to be looking exactly symmetrical. And once I have all the strands that I want, I'm just going to mark the entire outer edge as a seam. Because at this point, we're going to extrude and this matches what they have as well. So extrude, scale it down a little and move it a little backwards. This makes it so that the hair will be able to work with 3D outlines. It also gives it a little bit of depth. You can already see it creates a little shading or outline effect of its own. I'm going to use this same plane method to create the side hairs. And for the back of the hairstyle, we decided to go with double low ponytails. So for the back bun, I'm just going to use a subdivided cube. Subdivide it and shape it how I want it to. And I would say this is a good method if you're stuck on how you should model your hair. It kind of makes you consciously think of how you're going to structure your hair and breaks it down into a few different parts. And it is a lot faster than the other methods, which is the sculpt and retopology method, as well as the curves method, because setting that up is also a pain. I'm going to do the same thing for the twin tails at the back. Just subdivide a cube and then extrude it. Then I'll just play around with the shape and sculpt mode and edit mode. As for the hair texturing, it's very simple and clean, quite light on the details. They will have this gradient and then they just texture in the strands. The highlights are actually rendered on a different layer. If you can see how like the opacity changes. I'm not going to be going into all of that today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go completely off the rails on the texturing here because one, I suck at texturing hair, still something that I have to learn, and two, Blender kept crashing when I tried to texture it. Just going to keep it a buckaroo. So we've got our uh, UVs unwrapped. That little circle of UVs is just all the edges and we can put the shadow color there to easily achieve that mini outline effect. There's everything unwrapped. Now time to texture paint. And it's a good thing that this art style is not completely reliant on its hair texture. But have no fear, we will revisit this one day. And for now I'm just going to use this lazy reverse painting technique. 
gave her some nice puke green highlights. While editing this video, I learned one more thing. For those of us using this hollow eye socket, we kind of run into the problem of the bottom of the iris hitting the socket. When I looked at Asher's model, it didn't have this problem, so obviously I took a look inside. Mother of Pearl, that thing ain't even connected. So that's how they avoid this problem. Fortunately for me, that's an easy fix. I just separate this part out. I delete this edge, which would connect the eye socket. Then for this thing, I just merge it at a point in the middle and move that point back. Scale it up a little bit and just make sure the edges are as close to the head mesh as possible. This not only fixes the clipping problem, but now we also don't have to worry if we have a subdivision surface messing up that area because of the connected eye socket. Anyways, it's time to put this creation into the game engine so we can replicate some of the post-processing stuff that goes on in Zenless Zone Zero. A big part of their art style is how they achieve this cinematic look in their game. It certainly gives their game a unique look compared to some others in the genre. I don't know their exact settings, but adding a vignette darkens the edges so there's more focus on the character. They for sure have some depth of field to add blur to the scene, color grading to make the colors pop, and a little bit of bloom to give the characters that ethereal glowing quality. Another cool thing going on here is that we're not using inverted hull for the outlines. Not sponsored, but I'm using this shader called Realtune, which has built-in outlines that don't add any extra geometry, aka it doesn't double your amount of vertices. And that's going to be it for today. I know the replication is not complete. There's still a lot of things that we have to do to make it truly feel like a Zenless Zone Zero character. Things like the expressions, the animation details from today that we have to improve, but there's always something new to learn every day. So definitely like, subscribe, and stick around if you want to see future editions of this character, as well as more analyses on different 3D models from different games.